Um, when you want to create these platforms after you have your isometric tile sheet um, and your tiles set up and you've already drawn and placed them, first you start on your solid layer and you make your platform that you want the entity to go on. And then you switch layers to a non-collision layer and you paint the tiles around it to make it look like it's in 3D or I mean now that there's actually really 3D it's hard to even say I'm really 3D but you know 3D right that's how you do it right there boom so how do I make tiles like that and how do I get my entities to look like they're standing on it if you look at him he's not he's not on this this flat solid spot anymore right now he's moved up and if I come over here and I butt right up against this I'm not really up against this wall either I'm off to the left a little bit same thing with this robot guy right why is he patterning right in there? Same thing with the coins. And the answer to that is I use this offset property on the player and on all those entities where I offset them by a couple of pixels. So line 11 of the player JS, you can see I'm offsetting X by 2 and Y by 4. And that's pulling him out and then up a little bit, right? Um, let me go and turn on the debug so you can see the collision boxes and you'll get a better idea of what's happening I think right. just in case Let's show collision boxes so you see my collision box is still in the same spot but look at my entity right I'm over two and up four from where I usually start on that collision box you look at my head bobbing up above it and same thing with the robots they're on the same spot that they usually are at but instead their their animation their sheet is up right it's moved up with the offset property same thing with the coins right and the bullets okay so that, and that's what's going on there. That's by using the offset. That's what lets me make it the optical illusion that the players, you know, like actually up on that area. Um, you know, you just have to make sure if you're going to do this and not do and not one way is better than the other. I mean, it's all preference. This game style, I want to try to experiment with it because I never have before. This is all new for me. Um, but if I if I didn't feel comfortable, or if I didn't want it for a specific game, you know, you don't have to use it. It's just something you have to keep in mind. And if you do go this route, you have to make sure that everything that you do later on uses those offsets. Like every coin, everything else, every bullet, um, anything that's going to interact with the player. Because what you don't want it to happen is for him to appear the way he does. Like, look at my head right now and how I'm bobbing up and down. You don't want that appearance to conflict with the game mechanics and have like a bullet that doesn't even go near the visual because the player can't see these boxes all the player can see you know is what they see on the screen is the artwork right so if if you make them feel like they got ripped off and you cheap shot them somehow by not remembering to use your offset on everything else that you're doing in the game then you know you're gonna have players that aren't gonna have a good time right so make sure that you whichever style design you go with, make sure you apply it throughout your game, you don't mix and match them. Um, that's probably like common sense for most people, but I uh, just talk about everything I think about when I'm streaming, so there you go. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the background, after I sip some coffee. If you notice when I move, the foreground's moving at a different rate than my background is. And I accomplished this with a layer called background one, right, which I can turn off and turn back on in the Weltmeister, um, which is drawn right here. It's very, it's pretty large because I want to do some more scene stuff with it um, and, and break it up a lot so the player has a hard time telling that it's just the tile set that's repeated over and over again. But if I turn off these other um, things, right, you can see on my background right here this is what it looks like and uh, I made a tile set right here and some more isometric stuff to kind of give it like a 3D like skyscraper look and I tile it around and everything that happens because it's set to repeat um, if I turn off repeat and apply you'll see it looks like that and if I put repeat back on 
There it is. Um, everything I do will show up on on everywhere. Right? So right. That's how that works. So man, man what I do. Alright. There you go. And, and that's what gives me the parallax. Now I might make another background later that goes even behind this one and that has a further distance value. And so there'll be multiple layers that are all moving at different rates uh, for the player as they move around on the map. All right. Let me start a new graphics gal file now, and I'll show you how I created the artwork for um, the tile set I'm using. I'll show you. I'll, I won't create a new file, but I'll just kind of copy some of this over and show you. What I did was... Um, I had this original like default tile set that I always use. I talked about this in episode one, I think. It's like my template. It's a cross and a square, and then a completely surrounded box, a box with only vertical borders, and a box with horizontal borders, right? So this box set, fully bordered, vertical border, horizontal border, right? This cross here and this square will give me almost every tile that I want to use without any variance. And then I need to duplicate those and make new versions of them and make sure the patterns connect good and stuff. And that'll give me variance to break up the pattern. But before I do that, I need to have that set up, right? Well, in order to create isometric tiles that, that go with that set, I just simply take this set, right, and I paste it. Usually I don't paste it, usually I work right in it. Like that. Right, let me zoom in. And I'll just pretend like I don't have any of this other stuff done yet. Let me do my selector. So, delete, 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 delete. These are variants here. Let's read out those. Right, and paint bucket. That this off and zoom in. I'm gonna sneeze. I can feel it come in. I right click to change colors. If you notice like how's he changing colors all the time? It's right click. Right? If I right click and hold I'll select stuff. But that's how I, I do it without going into my palette. In case you were wondering all right, so I have my cross, my square, and my pipe set. Now, if I'm working in 2D with no isometric, I squish these all together, right, and compact them down in. Um, but because I plan on extending these out right now, I am going to show you what I do. All right. So the first thing, that I, I choose an angle that I want to have, and I change my grid, right? Then I'll take a line tool and I'll just draw out my lines. I started here in, in the tile, right? And then I went up and I stayed inside these two tiles. So I make sure I, I maintain that same pattern. In the tile, in the tile. And I draw this down, right? In the tile, in the tile, draw this over, right? In the tile, in the tile. Right, draw this down, and as you can see, what will happen is I'll create right all these little spots here, right. and I do it for the entire piece usually, and then I figure out what's duplicated, and I squish it down or I create variations. So there's that. All right. Then I'll come over to this box and just do the same thing. Do do. Right. Up here, in the tile, in the tile. I want to say in the tile, I mean I'm starting here, not not down here, right? Not over here. I'm starting in the tile that's diagonal. I just want to stay consistent. So. And then in this tile and in this tile. 
Right. Now I can change my grid back. Uh huh. -huh. Okay. Right. To 16 by 16, and I can see how all those pieces are going to look. Right. So I have two wall pieces here. I can already make a variant. Two top pieces here will let me make a variant. Right. These pieces are duplicated. I just kind of look for things that match this piece and this piece are the same, right? Then after I draw them all up, I cut them out and I squish everything together where there's dead tiles, right? Like right here. Right here's a dead tile, right here's a dead tile, right here's a dead tile, right here's, you know, like there's all these empty spots now around. And I want everything to get packed in together like this. Right? That way I have more space to create even more tiles and more variations and whatnot. So that's why you see like these two spots, this tile here and this tile, I don't know if you can see my mouse well, this tile and this tile, this one here, they were over on top of this box here and here. Okay, so zoom out. Undo everything because I'm not going to actually use that. Okay, good. And that's that's how I create those tile sets. So, and so I talked about that. Talked about the background. I did the same thing for the background pieces. I just use a darker color uh, so the foreground stands out for the player. Need a drink. And that pretty much wraps up the background parallax stuff and the isometric details.